So where is the bug in this code? Okay, sorry. Where is the bug in this code? Anyone? Yell out loud so I can hear. What? Correct, the early return. If we take the return in the middle, we will skip over the delete at the end, and that'll be a memory leak. So where's the bug in this code? It's a similar, but a little more subtle. If the second allocation fails and throws an exception, we won't do either of the deletes, but that means the uh, memory for Y will be leaked. And last example, what is wrong with this code? It's not necessarily a bug, but it's something that should raise red flags during a code review. Yes, we got one, it's, yep, that's one of them. Someone there said, uh, deleting the arguments. So X and Y are passed in as just raw pointers, and the function deletes them. Are we allowed to delete them? Do we own that memory? Is that being transferred in? And the other one is that we're returning memory that was allocated as a raw pointer. So we're expecting the caller to delete that memory, but that's not clear from the signature. So one of the problems with raw pointers, which these small examples alluded to, is that pointers can represent many, so many things. Pointers are too powerful for their own good. There are many different independent characteristics that the use of a pointer can have. I will go over a few of the important ones. The first characteristic, ugh, characteristic of interest is whether the pointer points to a single object or to an array of objects. This affects what you can do with the pointer. Operators new and delete have different forms for single objects and arrays. If you call the single object delete when your pointer points to memory allocated with the return, with the array form of new, or vice versa, your program may crash. Also, if your pointer points to an array, you can increment and decrement and use the index operator. Those operations are not realistically usable on a pointer to a single object. Pointers to a single object and to an array have the same type the C++ type system doesn't help you know what you can do with your pointer. The second characteristic is whether or not the pointer owns the memory that it points to. If the pointer owns the memory, delete must be called when the code is done with the memory. If the pointer is not the owner, then delete must not be called. Again, owning pointers and non-owning pointers have the same type. Not only does the type system not tell you which version of delete you must call, it doesn't tell you whether or not you are allowed to call delete. And if ownership is shared between several different pointers, there's not a good way to keep track of all those pointers and know when all of them are done. In some parts of your code, you might know that a pointer should never be null. Your code would be simpler by removing all the null pointer checks if, you're, if your pointer type simply didn't allow null pointer values. But C++ pointers don't have that capability. The C++ pointer type T star can be used for all possible combinations of these characteristics. You can't use the type system to communicate your intentions about the, how the pointer is used or should be used. This leads to code that is unclear, difficult to understand, and error prone. So what can we do about this? Welcome to my talk about smart pointers. I'm David Olson, lead engineer for the NVIDIA HPC C++ compiler. I spend my days worrying about C++ 23 features, parallel algorithms, and GPU programming models. Hopefully I've learned enough about smart pointers in the last couple months that I can pre present something that will be useful to you. Smart pointers are a tool that can be very helpful at taming the expansive behaviors of raw pointers. The first thing to know about smart pointers 
is that they behave like a pointer. Not necessarily everything that a pointer can do, but it should have the API of at least one of the roles that a pointer can have. What is common to all the roles for a pointer is that the pointer can point to an object and that it can be dereferenced. So a smart pointer should at least be dereferenceable. The rest of its API should be whatever makes it most useful for its intended role. The smart in smart pointers refers to whatever logic is added to the type that makes it more useful than a raw pointer for certain use cases. The smarts can be almost anything. A common smart behavior is to release resources, such as freeing memory in the smart pointer's destructor. But the smart behavior could be lots of other things, such as imposing restrictions on how the pointer can be used, or performing certain runtime checks, or automatically doing some action, such as logging or registration. In a few rare cases, the smarts is not in the behavior, but in the name. GSL owner is just a type def of a raw pointer. It doesn't change the behavior, but it does communicate to the reader the intent of the code. I don't re recommend using smart pointers that are just type, type defs, but there are some situations where changing the code to use a real smart pointer would be problematic, so a type def is better than nothing. If smart pointers are so great, are there any situations where you should use a raw pointer? Yes. When you have a non-owning pointer to a single object. If a pointer owns what it points to, use a smart pointer. If it's a non-owning pointer to an array, consider using a span type, such as std span or GSL span, as Bjarne recommended in his keynote yesterday. If your code uses raw pointers only for non-owning references, your code will be easier to read and maintain and will have fewer pointer-related bugs. The C++ standard library contains two smart pointer types that are widely used, unique pointer and shared pointer. I will cover those in detail, starting with unique pointer. Bjarne, in his keynote yesterday, said that the release of resources must be guaranteed and implicit. Unique pointer is one way to accomplish that for allocated memory. A unique pointer owns the memory that it points to. In fact, it assumes it has exclusive ownership or unique ownership of that memory. When the, when the unique pointer object is done with what it points to, such as in its destructor or its assignment operator, it will call the object's destructor and free the memory. This automatic cleanup of memory is the reason for unique pointer's existence. Unique pointer, which is defined in the standard header memory, has one required template parameter, which is the type of the object that it points to. The template parameter is not the type of the pointer, but the element type, as you can see from the public type aliases within the class. Here is a simple example of how to use unique pointer as a local variable. Assume that our code uses the type helper type, which, for whatever reason, should always be allocated on the heap. We'll define a variable, let's call it owner, so its purpose in this example is very clear, of the type unique pointer of helper type. We initialize it with a pointer to a newly allocated helper type object. Now, the variable owner owns the memory and has the responsibility of cleaning up the memory when it is done. We can dereference the unique pointer using either the arrow operator or the star operator. When the unique pointer owner goes out of scope, its destructor will automatically call delete, both destroying the helper type object and freeing the memory. We don't have to remember to call delete or make, or make sure the delete happens on all passable paths through the function. The delete happens automatically no matter how we exit the function. Here's a simple example of how to use unique pointer as a member of a class. Widget is a polymorphic class hierarchy with widget base at the base. Create widget is the factory function that provides us with a heap allocated widget. The caller of create widget is responsible for destroying the widget and freeing the memory. Every object of type my class needs its own widget. So my class has a data member of type unique pointer of widget base, again, conveniently named owner. 
In every my class constructor, owner is initialized with the result of calling create widget. The destructor for my class doesn't have to do anything special. The unique pointer destructor takes care of all the necessary cleanup, which, which is calling the widget's virtual destructor and freeing the memory. Again, if we use a unique pointer, it is impossible to forget to do the cleanup. Unique pointer is very useful for implementing RAII, or resource acquisition is initialization. For more on RAII, see Andre Koster's talk uh, two sessions after this one, around all the way at the other end in Summit 2.3. Unique pointer is a move-only type. It cannot be copied because it has no copy constructor or copy assignment operator only a move constructor and a move assignment operator. That's because unique ownership can't be copied, only moved or transferred. I won't try to explain move-only move types here. If you want, you can learn more by watching any of the Back to Basics move semantics talks of the last four years, though I am biased in preferring the one from two years ago. To help you develop a mental model of how Unique Pointer works, I will show you a sample implementation of the class. This is incomplete in a number of ways, but it is still useful. Once you understand this sample code, you won't be able to implement Unique Pointer, but you should be able to use Unique Pointer effectively in your own code. One thing to note is that every Unique Pointer member function is no except, because Unique Pointer never allocates any resources it only takes ownership of memory that has already been allocated. It never does anything that could fail with an exception. Unique pointer has one data member, which is a pointer to the object that it owns. The default constructor creates a unique pointer that doesn't own anything. This is referred to as an empty unique pointer, though it may colloquially be called a null unique pointer. There is an explicit constructor that takes a raw pointer. If the pointer is not null, the unique pointer takes ownership of the memory pointed to by that pointer. The constructor is, ex is explicit because taking ownership is a significant event that should be done intentionally, not accidentally. It would be really bad if there were an implicit conversion from a raw pointer to a unique pointer. The destructor deletes the pointer calling the object's destructor and freeing the memory. Deleting a null pointer is a no-op, so there is no need to check first whether or not the pointer is empty. This is the most important and useful part of unique pointer, that it unconditionally deletes the memory in its destructor. Now for the copy and move constructor and assignment operators. The copy constructor and copy assignment operator are deleted functions because unique pointer is not copyable. The move constructor transfers ownership from the other unique pointer object. When it is done, the new object owns whatever the other object used to own, and the other object is empty and doesn't own anything. The move assignment operator first releases whatever memory is currently owned. It won't own that memory anymore because it is taking ownership of some other memory, so it must delete the old memory. Then it transfers ownership from the other unique pointer object, leaving the other object in an empty state. The two flavors of the dereference operators are straightforward. They both have the precondition that unique pointer is, object is not empty, but it is up to the user code to check that precondition. Unique pointer won't enforce that. And finally, the other useful member functions. Release gives up ownership without freeing the memory. The unique pointer is now empty, and the old pointer is returned. It is up to the caller of release to make sure the memory is freed somehow. Reset is kind of like the assignment operator, except it takes a raw pointer rather than a unique pointer. It releases whatever memory is currently owned, and then takes ownership of the pointer that is passed in. Get is just a simple getter. It returns the pointer that is currently owned. 
There is an explicit conversion to bool, which allows unique pointer to be used in conditions such as the expression of an if statement. The conversion operator returns true if the unique pointer is not empty or false if it is empty. Alongside the class unique pointer, the standard library also has the function make unique, which combines into one function three actions that are often done together. It, one, allocates memory, two, constructs the object, forwarding its own parameters to the object's constructor, and three, creates and returns a unique pointer that owns the object and its memory. Whenever you can, you should use make unique rather than creating a unique pointer directly. The first template argument to make unique, which is the type of the object to be created, can't be deduced. It must always be specified explicitly, as seen in this example. The top line is from our first example of using unique pointer. The code is better and cleaner if it is converted to use make unique instead. Make unique can't be used everywhere. When the allocation of the object and the creation of the unique pointer happen in different places, as in this example, where the widget is allocated in create widget and the unique pointer is constructed in the my class constructor, there is no place to put the call to make unique. Both unique pointer and make unique have partial specializations for array types. If unique pointer's template parameter is an array type, then unique pointer will call the array from the delete instead of the single object form. Sorry, will call the array form of delete instead of the single object form. And unique pointer will provide an indexing operator. If make unique's first template parameter is an array type, then it takes exactly one function argument, which is the number of items to allocate in the array. Here is the corrected code from the first example from the very beginning of the talk. We create a unique pointer using make unique with an array type for the template parameter and passing the number of elements we want as the function argument to make unique. The type of temp here is unique pointer of unbounded array of double. When the function exits, the unique pointer destructor will call the array form of delete. This happens whether we take the early return or fall off the end of the function. We no longer have to worry about always deleting the memory. When transferring ownership from one unique pointer to another, use the move constructor or the move assignment operator. Don't ever call release on one unique pointer and then pass that raw pointer to the other one. I think this code would work, but it's such bad form that I didn't bother to test it. I would absolutely reject this if it ever showed up in a code review. Do it this way instead. Let unique pointer handle all the details. This code better communicates your intent that you are transferring ownership from one unique pointer to another. When transferring ownership into a function or out of a function, pass a unique pointer by value or return it by value. For those who are not familiar with move-only types, this might seem counterintuitive, but it works. Here is the third example from the beginning of the talk. This is the broken form. We can fix it by changing it to this. The parameters are now unique pointers. Because unique pointer is move only, ownership is automatically transferred into the function. The caller can no longer own the memory after making the call. The return type is also unique pointer. This makes it impossible for the caller to forget to free the memory. Even if the caller does nothing and discards the return value, the memory will still be freed. Because we are now using unique pointer, we don't need the explicit calls to delete anymore. They happen automatically. Let's go back to our widget example one more time. Create widget returns a widget based pointer and expects its caller to own the object and to delete it when the time comes. 
That's error prone. The code will be cleaner, clearer and more robust if create widget is changed to return a unique pointer. Unique pointer isn't perfect. Because it needs to work with existing C++ code, there are a couple gotchas that you need to be mindful of. The first is to never pass the same pointer to two different unique pointer objects. It is up to the programmer to make sure that ownership really is unique. In the first example, the same raw pointer variable is used to initialize two different unique pointer objects. This, result, this will result in a crash due to a double free. The second example looks different, but it has the same effect. Two unique pointer objects own the same memory, again resulting in a double free crash. As a general rule, don't create a unique pointer from a raw pointer unless you know where that pointer came from and are certain that it needs to have an owner. The second thing to watch out for is the dangling pointer problem. When a pointer is deleted, any other pointer that was pointing to the same memory becomes invalid and can't be used for anything. That can happen with unique pointer just as easily as it can happen with raw pointers. It is up to the programmer to make sure that any raw pointers that were created by calling unique pointer.get are no longer in use after the unique pointer goes out of scope. One last comment about unique pointer. Standard containers of unique pointers just work. Standard containers know how to handle move-only types and do the right thing. If you need to keep track of a large number of unique pointers, the easiest way to do that is with a vector of unique pointer. Next, I'll cover share pointer, which is also a smart pointer type that owns what it points to. The big difference from unique pointer is that, as the name implies, ownership is shared rather than unique. Many shared pointer objects can work together to jointly own an object and its memory. The object will be automatically destroyed and its memory freed when the last shared pointer object goes away. Unlike unique pointer, shared pointer objects are copyable because shared ownership can be copied even when unique owners Unique ownership cannot. Like unique pointer, shared pointer is defined in the standard header memory and has one template parameter, which is the type of the object pointed to. As stated a couple slides back, the object is owned, the object owned by the shared pointers will be automatically destroyed and its memory freed when the last shared pointer object goes away. If 100 shared pointers share ownership of an object, and then 99 of those shared pointers go away. The object is still alive and still valid. It is only when the last of those 100 shared pointers gives up ownership that the object is destroyed. Ownership is shared equally. No one shared pointer object is in charge. There is no way to force a shared pointer to give up its share of the ownership or to claim unique ownership. Some examples of shared ownership. In the real world, consider a community garden where everyone in the neighborhood shares the responsibility for tending the garden. Um, as long as one person is left taking care of the garden, the garden will produce something useful. It is only when the last person leaves that the garden will become overgrown and overgrown with weeds and its life will be done as a garden. Open source projects can in some ways be similar, where ownership and responsibility is shared among everyone who wants to contribute. Again, as long as there's one person who's willing to make those commits, that the open source project can probably survive and continue, and continue on. But when the last person says, I'm done, leaving no one behind, then the open source project will grow stale and people will stop using it. Shared ownership shows up in many places in source code. For example, in many GUI environments, there can be many references to a widget, such as a window or a button. The widget needs to stay alive as long as any of those references is alive. Another example is promise and future. 
They have shared state that needs to stick around as long as either the promise or the future exists, but it is unknown which one will survive the longest. So they have to share ownership of the shared state. Shared ownership in code is often implemented with reference counting or garbage collection. Shared pointer uses reference counting. For unique pointer, I showed you a sample implementation to give you a mental model of how it works. Shared pointer's implementation is more complex, and showing it here wouldn't be as useful. So this diagram will have to do for giving you a mental model of shared pointer. The shared pointer object is the blue box on the left. It has two fields, both pointers. One points to the object that is being managed, the other points to the control block. The green boxes on the right are always on the heap. The T box represents the object that is being managed. The box below is the control block, which has two fields. One is a pointer to the object being managed. The other is an atomic int named count in this example that holds the number of shared pointer objects that are currently using this control block. Because this diagram has only one shared pointer object, count has the value one. Control block actually has a lot more field, a lot more than two fields to implement features that I won't get into until later. But these two fields are enough for you to understand how shared pointers work. In this diagram, we have copied the original shared pointer object, so there are now two shared pointers that manage the same object. The two shared pointers point to the same managed object and the same control block. But the counter in the control block now has the value two. When the shared pointer was copied, the counter in the control block was incremented. I won't show a sample implementation, but I will show you a simplified API for shared pointer. You will notice that it's similar to unique pointer, but with a few key differences that I will point out. Because shared pointer sometimes has to allocate memory for the control block, not all of its member functions are no except. The default constructor creates an empty shared pointer that doesn't own anything and doesn't have a control block. There is an explicit constructor that takes a raw pointer. The shared pointer takes ownership and starts managing the object that is passed in. The constructor allocates a control block and sets its counter to one. The destructor decrements the counter in the control block. If the decremented count is zero, that means this was the last shared pointer that was managing this object. In that case, the destructor of the shared pointer destroys the managed object, frees the memory for the managed object, and frees the control block. If the decremented count is greater than zero, other shared pointers are still alive and no cleanup happens. Here are the other constructors and the assignment operators. The copy constructor copies the object pointer and the control block pointer and increments the counter in the control block. The move constructor transfers ownership, leaving the other shared pointer in an empty state. No changes are made to the counter since the number of shared pointer objects using the control block hasn't changed. There is a constructor that takes a unique pointer R value. It allocates a control block, sets its counter to one, and then leaves the unique pointer in an empty state. That effectively transfers ownership from the unique pointer to the shared pointer. The transfer of ownership can only go one way. It is possible to convert unique ownership into shared ownership, but there is no way to convert shared ownership to unique ownership because the shared pointer can never guarantee that it is the only owner. The assignment operators behave just like their corresponding constructors, except that they effectively run the destructor first. The assignment operator needs to give up its shared ownership first before it can assume shared ownership of whatever is passed in. Both flavors, both flavors of the dereference operator are straightforward and do just what you would expect. And the rest of the useful functions. Note that there is no release function. Because unique pointer implements unique ownership, it is possible to release the ownership in its entirety and let it be transferred somewhere else. But with shared pointer, it is not possible to fully release the ownership. There may be some other shared pointer objects somewhere out there that are still, that are still holding onto this object. Therefore, the release function 
doesn't make sense for shared pointer. Reset effectively calls the destructor and then calls the constructor that takes a raw pointer. It gives up any current ownership and then takes ownership of the pointer that is passed in. Get is a simple getter that returns a pointer to the managed object. The conversion operator to bool returns true if there is a managed object or false if the shared pointer is empty. There's one shared pointer member function that unique pointer doesn't have, use count. It returns the value of the counter in the control block. This is not reliable in a multi-threaded environment because the value of the counter might change before you can do anything with the value that was returned. Use count can be useful for debugging or for understanding how your code uses shared pointers, but it shouldn't be used in production code in multi-threaded programs. Make shared has all the same advantages as make unique plus one extra advantage. It does just one memory allocation that is big enough for the managed object, for both the managed object and the control block. If you don't use make shared, two separate memory allocations will be required. So prefer using make shared over creating a shared pointer directly. It has slightly better performance in addition to being cleaner code. This slide is an important point, but I don't know how to state it succinctly, so you'll have to put up with a long explanation. For two or more shared pointers to share ownership, which means they manage the same object and use the same control block, exactly one of the shared pointers needs to have been created from the raw pointer or from make shared. And all of the other shared pointers need to have been copied from a shared pointer. If the same raw pointer is used to create two separate shared pointers, as in the example here, the shared pointers will have separate control blocks and will not work together. The object will end up being destroyed twice, leading to a double free error. Shared pointer does not keep track of all the other shared pointers out there and go check whether one of them owns the thing that it's being asked to own. This snippet has the same problem. Shared pointer B is created from the raw pointer, not copied directly from shared pointer A. This again results in a double free. This code snippet does it correctly. The first shared pointer is created with make shared, then the others are copied from an existing shared pointer. There is only one control block, so the object will be cleaned up only once, like it is supposed to be. Now, some discussion on thread safety. Shared, po shared pointer provides some level of thread safety, but not as much as you might want. If you work in a multi-threaded environment, you need to know what is safe and what requires extra synchronization on your part. Updating the same control block from different threads is thread safe. In this example, a shared pointer is passed by value into a child thread. The main thread and the child thread have different shared pointer objects that manage the same int. This is fine. These are all the places where the control block counter is incremented or decremented without any synchronization that the user can see. One of the decrements, and we're not sure exactly which one, will set the count to zero and result in the managed object being destroyed and freed. It is up to the shared pointer implementation to make this work. It usually does this by making the counter be an atomic int and using atomic fetch, fetch add to increment and decrement it. The code also reads the managed object from both threads without synchronization. That's fine because all accesses to the object are reads. But if we change the code slightly, to write to the managed object from both threads, that's a data race. Shared pointer doesn't provide any synchronization of the managed object. You need to do that yourself. In the previous example, the control block was being modified from multiple threads, but it was happening via different shared pointer objects in each thread. In this example, the code is accessing the same shared pointer object from both threads because the lambda for the child thread captures shared pointer A by reference. This is a problem. One thread reads A, 
while the other thread modifies A without synchronization. That's a data race. Shared pointer will synchronize access to the control block, but it doesn't synchronize access to the shared pointer object itself. You can safely use different shared pointers that manage the same object, but you can't safely use the same shared pointer object from multiple threads. Shared pointer and make shared have partial specializations for array types, similar to unique pointer. But for reasons that I don't know, the shared pointer support came later. Shared pointer didn't support arrays until C++17 and make shared until C++20. If you want to use shared pointer to manage arrays, make sure your standard library is new enough. Now that we have covered both unique pointer and shared pointer, when should you use one or the other? If an object in its memory have only one owner at a time, use unique pointer. If an object in its memory can have multiple owners simultaneously, use shared pointer. If you have a non-owning reference, don't use either of them. If you are unsure about whether unique pointer or shared pointer is the right smart pointer to use, go with unique pointer. In the future, once you, once you know more about how your object will be used and the right choice of which one becomes obvious to you, it will be much easier to change your code from unique pointer to shared pointer than the other way around. I said earlier that you could transfer ownership from a unique pointer to a shared pointer. The same thing applies to your source code. It's easier to change your source code from unique pointer to shared pointer than the other way around. This mostly completes the back to basics portion of the talk. The rest of the talk will touch on some more advanced topics. I will only cover them briefly. I don't expect you to leave here knowing how to use any of these. I just want you to know that they exist and what they are used for. So when you encounter, when you encounter a situation where one of the features might be useful, you know what term to Google to learn more about it. We'll start with weak pointer. A weak pointer is a non-owning reference to an object that is managed by a shared pointer. The really cool thing about weak pointer is that it knows whether or not the object that it references still exists. A weak pointer is created from a shared pointer. It references the same object as the shared pointer, but the weak pointer doesn't claim ownership of that object. A weak pointer can't be dereferenced de directly. Which technically, mean, which technically means it is not a smart pointer. To get at the referenced object, you have to call lock, which returns a shared pointer. If that shared pointer is empty, then the object has been destroyed and no longer exists. If the shared pointer returned by lock is not empty, you can access the object by dereferencing that shared pointer. In the call to lock highlighted here, a shared pointer still exists and the managed object is still alive. So T is not empty, and the highlighted printf will print 42. At the closing brace, both S and T go out of scope. So the, control, so the control block counter goes to zero, and the managed int is destroyed. When lock is called for a second time, the managed object no longer exists. So shared pointer U is empty, and printf will print F will print empty. When might you want to use weak pointers? Because weak pointers can only be created from shared pointers, weak pointers are only useful when ownership is managed by shared pointers. If you are using unique pointer or something else, weak pointers will do you no good. Weak pointers are useful for caching. If you keep a weak pointer in your cache, you can access the object quickly as long as, it is as long as it is still alive. If the object goes away, you can safely detect that and fall back to the slower path to get at the information. Weak pointers can help with the dangling reference problem. If there is a chance that your non-owning reference might dangle, use a weak pointer rather than a raw pointer. That way you can safely detect whether or not the object can be accessed. 
The next advanced topic is custom deleters. At some point, for reasons beyond your control, you will be stuck using a C interface where initialization and destruction of objects are done with explicit function calls, such as C's F open and F close in this example. As with an explicit delete, the cleanup function call, F close in this case, might be forgotten or might be skipped over by an early return. This can be dealt with by using the custom deleter feature of unique pointer or shared pointer. Unique pointer actually has two template parameters. The second one, which has a default value, tells unique pointer how to clean up the resource. The default deleter just calls delete. If you provide your own deleter, it must have a function call operator that accepts the pointer type. Make unique, unfortunately, doesn't have any way to specify a deleter. So you will have to create the unique pointer directly if you want it to have a custom deleter. Here is how we can use unique pointer to make sure fclose is called automatically. Our custom deleter class, fclose deleter, has a function call operator that calls fclose. We define a type alias for unique pointer with the custom delete, sorry, with the custom deleter. Then we just create a variable of type unique file, passing it the return value of fopen. When the variable goes out of scope, fclose will be called automatically. Shared pointer implements custom deleters a little differently. Shared pointer type erases the deleter. It is not part of the type. Instead, it is a template parameter on the constructor. The fclose deleter class is the same, but we need to create an object of fclose deleter and pass it to the shared pointer constructor. When a shared pointer is copied, the deleter is copied along with everything else. When all the shared pointer objects go out of scope, the custom deleter will be invoked and fclose will be called. This is true even when fp2 is the last shared pointer, even though the custom deleter was originally passed to fp, not fp2. Now, shared pointer is able to type erase the deleter because it has some memory on the heap where it can store the type erased information in the control block. Unique pointer cannot type erase its deleter because it never allocates memory. So it has no place to put the type erased information. So that's why in unique pointer, it has to, the deleter has to be part of the type. In shared pointer, it is not part of the type. Smart pointer has a few advanced features which warrant only a very quick mention. To have two shared pointer objects that have different types but manage the same object, you can use one of the pointer, pointer cast functions. Dynamic pointer cast is the most useful of these because it can be used to safely downcast within a type hierarchy. Another way to have two shared pointer objects that have different types but manage the same object is to use the aliasing constructor. The control block is taken from the other shared pointer, but the object pointer is the extra raw pointer parameter of the constructor. This feature is useful when you want a pointer to a sub-object that is within an object that is managed by a shared pointer, as shown in the example here. If you own a class whose objects are managed by shared pointers and you want to convert a this pointer into a shared pointer, look up shared pointer from this and enable shared pointer from this. It's tricky to, tricky to get right, but it is possible. In Daniela's keynote this morning, I noticed an enabled, share, enabled shared from this in her code, though I don't think she, she called it out or mentioned it. But she was using this feature. Raw pointers are very powerful. Too powerful, in fact. Because they can do so many different things, it isn't clear which of those things you want a particular pointer to do. While not a panacea, smart pointers can help here. They can automate certain tasks, such as cleanup, and they can limit the API 
to a certain role so that the programmer's intent for this particular pointer is more clear. Standard C++ has two commonly used shared pointer types, unique pointer and shared pointer. Use them whenever they fit your needs. But please don't limit yourself to the standard smart pointers. If the code base that you are working in has smart pointers that behave correctly, go ahead and use them. And don't be afraid to write your own smart pointers if you can't find any existing one that fits your needs. To see some examples of non-standard smart pointers, including ones that have nothing to do with ownership, watch Matthew Fleming's The Smart Pointers I Wish I Had from CppCon 2019. If you want a programming exercise in smart pointers to see if you've learned something from here, may I recommend writing your own smart pointer that prevents the pointer from being null. Write a non-null smart pointer. And think about what API that class, that type should have. What should you be able to do with it? And what should work where you should put the check? I think that'll be a good, a good test of seeing if you understand how smart pointers are supposed to work. And finally, some guidelines. Uh, if you take anything from away from this talk, remember these and try to use them in your code. These are just guidelines. They are not unbreakable rules. So sometime in your career, you will find cases where the guidelines don't apply. But if you want to break them, if you want to not follow them, understand what you are doing first and what the consequences might be. So the guidelines. Always use smart pointers to represent ownership. If there's any doubt about which one is best, use unique pointer instead of shared pointer. Use make unique and make shared wherever feasible. Pass unique pointers by value and return unique pointers by value to transfer ownership between functions. Okay, thank you for coming to my talk and learning about shared pointers. We have about seven minutes for questions. I have an online question. Okay. What happens if the custom deleter throws an exception? Nothing good. You're, you have an exception inside a destructor. That's bad. Don't ever do that. I have another. Yeah. Uh, is it correct to pass smart pointers from API loaded from a shared library? I am not that familiar with all the intri intricacies of shared libraries, so I, I can't give a definitive answer. I know there might be some problems in that. I know, or I believe on Windows, the shared pointers, the, sorry, the shared libraries might have separate heaps, and so any problems that you have with passing pointers across heaps and allocating them in one shared library and freeing them in another shared library, those same problems, whatever they may be, can also apply to uh, smart pointers. Any questions in the room? My microphone's up front. I guess not, so if that's all, thank you.